like so many of us, I believe that I have compassion and empathy and I want to make a difference in other people's lives. That is my life's mission. I have this type of personality trait that in my past, I was absolutely naturally drawn to and other people were just drawn to me uh, to help sort out their issues. The type that a person would just walk up to me in the supermarket and just start talking to me. I used to be the type that would take in this type of person on a human level and on an animal level. And it's not really so surprising that even years before doing what I do now, I kind of was a personal coach, a relationship coach, and a healer for years. And I know so many of you out there too are healers, teachers, caregivers, and people who work in those types of industries, or you're just the go-to person in your social circle for everyone to kind of get advice from, maybe in your family as well. You are empaths, and usually people who are abused by narcissists are extremely lo wonderful, lovely people. When a codependent and a narcissist come together in a dance, it unfolds flawlessly. The narcissistic partner maintains their lead and the codependent follows perfectly. Their roles seem very natural to them because they have been practicing their entire lives. And again, the codependent reflexively gives up their power. And since the narcissist thrives on power and control, the dance is perfectly coordinated. Nobody gets their toes stepped on. Typically, codependents give of themselves much more than their partners will ever give back to them. They, as generous but bitter dance partners, they seem to be stuck on the dance floor, always waiting for the next song, and at which time they naively hope that their narcissistic partner will finally understand their needs. Codependents confuse caretaking and sacrifice with loyalty and love. And although they are proud of their unwavering dedication to the person that they love, they end up feeling unappreciated and used. Codependents yearn to feel love, but because of their choice of dance partner, they, they find their dreams unrealized. And with heartbreak of unfulfilled dreams, codependents silently and bitterly swallow their unhappiness. Individuals who are codependent dance very well with individuals who are narcissist because of their pathological personality styles or dance styles. They are complementary. In other words, they are perfectly matched for one another. Their well-matched dance Pref their preferences bond them together in a resilient and lasting partnership. Even if one of the partners is um, angry or unhappy or feeling resentful, as well-matched dancers, they perform magnificently on the dance floor because they instinctively expect each other's moves. They dance effortlessly with each other as if they have always danced together. Each knows his or her role and sticks to it, but it is dysfunctional compatibility that is the driving force behind this dynamic dancing duo. The narcissist dancer, on the other hand, like the codependent, the narcissist is attracted to a partner who feels perfect to them, someone who lets them lead and someone who makes them feel powerful, competent, and appreciated. And in other words, the narcissist feels most comfortable dancing with a companion who matches up with their self-absorbed and boldly selfish dance style. Narcissistic dancers are able to maintain the direction of the dance because they always find partners who lack self-worth, confidence, and who sometimes have low self-esteem, not always. But the, these are usually codependent people, and with a, such a well-matched companion, they are able to control both the dancer 
and the dance and the music along with that. So although the codependent dancer desires harmony and balance, they consistently sabotage themselves by choosing a partner that they are initially attracted to, but will ultimately resent when given a chance to stop dancing with their narcissistic partner and comfortably sit the dance out until someone healthy comes along, they typically choose to con they, to continue their unhealthy, dysfunctional dance. Unfortunately, they dare not leave this narcissistic dance partner because the lack of self-esteem and self-respect makes them feel as if they can do no better. And being alone is the, equival the equivalent of feeling lonely. And loneliness for the codependent is far too painful to bear. As perfectly compatible dance partners, the narcissist is the yin to the codependent's yang. The giving, sacrificial, and passive nature of the person who is codependent matches up perfectly with the entitled, the demanding, and self-centered narcissist. And like human magnets, codependents and narcissists continue their rocky and seemingly unstable relationships because of their opposite dance roles, or as I refer to them, their magnetic roles. The lasting bond created by these perfectly matched human magnets or dysfunctional dancers is powerful. It is binding them together despite the myriad of consequences or shared unhappiness between the two of them. And although their roller coaster relationship probably provokes more anxiety and disconnect from happiness, both seemed very compelled to continue on with the dance. When my narcissist came into my life, I truly did think that he was my soulmate, that he was my perfect partner, and he seemed to be everything that I had always wanted. And of course, that is absolutely what I wanted to believe, and I projected how wonderful he was on to him. This is key, and I really, I need you to stop and think about this for a minute. I needed him to be loving, honest, kind, attentive, generous, and benevolent, which was the picture in my mind that I had of my ex-narcissist. And of course, with any narcissist in your life, any narcissist you will soon discover over time, just as I did, that they are, in fact, the opposite of those things and that they are capable of being incredibly, incredibly cruel, dishonest, abusive, and they are capable of life-altering, devastating behavior. So here is the kicker, and it, it's what I did, and it's what we all do. We decide that we need to change them back to the version that we need them to be. And in order to do that, we try incredibly hard to fix them. And there is a lot to try to fix. So like many of us, I suffered the unthinkable, the insults, the name calling, the extreme jealousness, the violent behaviors, the pathological lying, the cheating, and even the criminal behavior against myself and others. And still I stayed. I was lecturing. I was prescribing. I was trying to fix him and teach him and direct him into having a conscience, changing his ways and trying to develop his character into something or somebody with humanity and integrity. I really want you to ask yourself, have you been doing this? Have you caught yourself going over and over fundamental points of human decency that even a five-year-old could understand. And whilst I did this with my ex-narcissist, I was attacked mercilessly, just, have you, just as you have been. And whilst I was trying to get him to see the error of his ways, I experienced the shocking twists and turns, the defenses, the low blows, the attacks, and the shocking accusations and insults that came in quickly thick and fast and there was the stonewalling there was silent treatments the abandonment episodes and he would leave and he would be I couldn't contact him for hours on end sometimes days and even I believe a week or so at one point and he would do things 
that were so crazy, it made my head spin. And I was thinking, how does he think that he can treat me this way and get away with it and think that I am going to stay with him? Yet, I always did. These perfectly matched dancers always seem to nail their dance routines, which is to be expected because they have been practicing their passive and predictive dance moves their whole adult lives. The dancing skills of someone who is codependent are distinctly connected to the person's reflex, reflexive dysfunctional agility, the ability to be attuned to the cues, the gestures, and the self-serving movement of the narcissistic partner. In almost every facet of their life, the, the individuals who are codependent pride themselves on knowing almost like in a psychic way what people want, what people need, and almost before their friends and families and partners know it themselves. Hence, codepend the codependent person is adept at anticipating the narcissist's needs and the, the partner's moves while still experiencing the dance as a positive experience. Conversely, dancers who are narcissistic are drawn to codependent partners because they are allowed to feel dominant, secure, and in control uh, of activity that brings them much appreciation, adulation, and uh, praise. They habitually choose or fall in love with codependent dance partners because they are given open permission to be the center of focus. They lead the direction of the dance and ultimately determine when, where, and how the dance will proceed. In other words, the narcissist's grandiosity in their entitlement and their need to be in control are not only allowed by his or her codependent partner, but also paradoxically make um, they make the, the, the codependent partner feel safe and secure in the dance. And this dance metaphor has been instrumental in my work with codependent clientele because it has helped them to understand the very persistent dysfunctional attraction pattern to hurtful and selfish narcissistic individuals. It has also helped them in breaking their, per their perpetual and reflexive patterns of choosing dance partners who initially felt perfect but eventually re revealed themselves to be completely wrong, even harmful for these codependents. And um, as a relative who sadly is a narcissist once told me when explaining the nature of these relationships from their perspective, the soulmate of your dreams will become the cellmate of your nightmares.